Good evening, everybody. Um, it's my pleasure again to welcome you and to introduce tonight's speaker. Uh, but before I do so, I, I would like to acknowledge the people who have made this exhibition and tonight's lecture possible. And I would like to offer special thanks to the Diversity Council at Rollins College. Thus bring Sandra Ramos here for the lecture and uh, Mary Robinson was here from the diversity, the chair of the Diversity Council. Um, she's right there. Uh, so thank you. Also the, uh, for the exhibition, I would like to thank the director's circle of um, the Cornell Fine Arts Museum and uh, Rollins College as one of our principal sponsors. And in, it is my uh, great pleasure to uh, introduce tonight's speaker, Sandra Ramos, one of the artists in this exhibition, and she's also um, in our permanent collection. Um, Sandra was uh, born and raised in Havana, Cuba, where she lived most of her life. She moved to Miami only about three years ago and uh, studied in, in Havana at the prestigious Santa Alejandro Art Academy and then at the Superior Institute of Art in Havana. And she's been active there on the art scene since the 1980s where, very importantly, she participated in a number of the Havana biennials, both as an artist and as a curator. But she came to international attention in 1993 when she um, won the grand prize in the National Printmakers Salon, Salon in Havana and was invited, uh, subsequently was invited to exhibit at the first International Printmakers Biennial in Maastricht in Holland and then at the International Printmakers Triennial at the Alvar Aalto Museum in Finland. And since then she has been very extensively exhibited at museums and galleries in this country, um, uh, in Cuba, uh, here in Miami, New York, Washington, D.C., Dallas, among others, as well as in Spain, Japan, England, Mexico, Germany, and Belgium. Uh, and the list goes on. Her work is in the permanent collections of the National Museum of Fine Arts in Havana, the MFA in Boston, MoMA in New York, the Miami Art Museum, uh, the thyssen bornemisza Contemporary in Vienna, the Ludwig Collection in Aachen, and most importantly, as I said, the Cornell Fine Arts Museum in Winter Park. <laughs> Uh, one of the most striking characteristics of Sandra Ramos's art is the fact that while she addresses a very special and specific um, environment, that of her country of origin, Cuba, her art also resonates quite universally and the, the notions that she handles and explores in her art resonate with all of us in very different ways. So. Um, it is my pleasure to welcome tonight uh, to the Cornell Fine Arts Museum, Sandra Ramos. Please help me welcome her. Well, thank you so much for the introduction, and thank you so much to the Cornell Museum, to the Rollins College, Amy, all the, my, my colleagues, the artists, all of you for being here tonight. Um, for me, it's a pleasure to, to share with you some of my ideas about my work and about my trajectory as an artist. Uh, I study printmaking in the Higher Institute of Art in Havana. So I, and my work you will are very interesting for me, too, in the way they approach to the uh, artistic language and the plastic arts. My, my reference has to do a lot, uh, of course, with, with illustration with the idea of political and graphics, uh, because it was always present in my education. Uh, and because uh, this reference allowed me to, to talk about uh, Cuban society and the issues that uh, were important there, but also important for all the world. This is a series that I started in 1989. Was, uh, it's a series of etchings and aquatin. And I think it's an old war, but in some way, it's, uh, with the situation now, it's very uh, uh, actual also what the, this work are uh, talking about. Of course, it's about the idea of colonization and the idea of tourism and the, the uh, misinterpretation that, that tourism ha uh, has of the places where they go. Uh, this is serious. Uh, in the 80s, in Cuba, it was very hard for Cuban people to go to a hotel. It was uh, for Biden. For Biden. The hotel was only for foreign people. 
And so I, I based this series in the old books from the colonial period uh, about the the, the uh, naturalists and the people who, who travel to America and to Caribbean and have all this idea of the paradise, the idea of the, the beach, the nature that we enjoy. And, and, and the, all this in contraposition with the reality of the country. So these are pieces that deal with this uh, idea. Are like, and of course, printmaking was a, a, it's a, a technique that I use a lot because also print has been very important for in, in, in art as a media, a very, very popular media to to transmit, um, to be, uh, make the artwork more, more uh, uh, the people have more access to, to the to the world. And as in Cuba, uh, the these kind of, of uh, concerns were not uh, touched in the in the in the public media as the television or the news. Well, well I think well, graphic and art will have the same uh, value that they have in the medieval times when uh, people receive all these prints uh, in contraposition with the paintings uh, and ha they have access to these ideas that were not in the, in the news. So this, uh, are, this is a piece, uh, the history lesson that I, I met in 1996 when dollar, uh, the dollar was allowed in Cuba uh, as a currency for first time. It was during the, the so-called special period. After Russia fall, Cuba was uh, in, a, in a, the deepest uh, crisis uh, that we have. And, and so one of the measures that the government take was allow that Cubans that live outside send money to their families and allow Cubans to, to have more dollars and, and buy with dollars in the store. So it's like the trip of uh, Washington to Cuba is always like one dollar bill and, and, and they have the, the representation of Washington and Liborio, who is the man with the hat. I work a lot with popular uh, uh, characters from the political cartoon. Liborio symbolized Cuban people as Uncle Sam, Sam symbolized uh, America. For us, we have it was created in the beginning of the 20th century by, by an artist. I was in all the newspapers, like the old Paisan, but at the same time, it's also very similar to Castro. So it's a character that I can play with. And they have these other two characters that you will see in many of my work. It's the fool is the, man, the little man and the pioneer. The fool was created in the 30s by Eduardo Avela uh, during the Machado dictatorship in, in Cuba and was a character also in newspapers that was criticizing the government of Machado, but in very subtle way, because it was like a fool man who say whatever he could, because nobody take care, it's a fool. And the pioneer is a, a character that I create, it's a, it's a mix between myself portrayed and an old print. Uh, and it's a kind of alter ego that represents my generation, all the Cubans born after the revolution. So from these three characters, Three characters. Uh, I establish a link between all the history of Cuba on the 20th century, from the Republic uh, to to now, to the new generation. Oh, it's another from the same series, the end of the innocence. You have to be with all this process that we are this happening and repeating in, in Cuba and in many countries of uh, dependence and. And that I, I show in many of my works, some of the videos here also deal with this idea of the, in the, the independence of countries uh, that have not resource or, the, uh, uh, or that have always been seen as uh, uh, in, a, in a colonial way. You know? And in Cuba, because of the revolution, was for many, many years uh, separated from the rest of the world. And, and uh, but at the same time, continued to be the revolution was made to independ, independ the country from from United States. But at the same time, we continue to be dependent from Russia, or dependent from China, or dependent from Venezuela. So it is a subject that I I, I bring on, on in my work also, and in this case, direct, directly to tourism. 
These are also very old pieces, a way of killing loneliness and my daily vocation of suicide. It has to do with the idea of art as a way of, of change society and the compromise that artists have with their time also. And I, I came from the 90s generation in Cuba. There was a generation that worried a lot with society that started to, to take art out of the institution. I made a lot of performance and actions in Cuba, uh, um, popular, with Cuban population. And many of these uh, uh, artists of the 90s, they were my teachers or my colleagues, also were uh, uh, censored and many of them moved uh, 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 from Cuba to other countries as Mexico or, or even the United States. And another uh, subject that is very uh, common in my work is education. Uh, I think education is a very important part of what we are as a humans and is the uh, thing that will help us to reach uh, our, our uh, goals. But in the case of Cuba, education was very good f during many years. But at the same time, I have this quality that, is, that was adoctrination, adoctrination, was that you give people good education, but they, then you want that they think in the way you want. So that's a very complex situation, and I think it's also part of contemporary uh, societies, and more, more in authoritarian societies. So I work with this. Uh, yeah, the, the, red uni the red dress is the uniform that all, all the students use in Cuba. So that also has to do with the idea of uh, uniformation, adoctrination. And you see, we will be like Che and Matutino. That is uh, uh, every day in the morning the students salute the flag. These are other pieces that have relate with this idea. The new ideology is also from 1994. And it's based on a slogan of the Young Communist uh, Party is study, war, and defense. So it's a mani uh, uh, ironizing with this. This is learning and prisoner head. So also, it, the, I, I made the PowerPoint is not in, in uh, it's, it's not made chronologically, in, more like by subjects. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have uh, influence, uh, influence, of course, of many artists. Uh, artists that deal with their society also interest me a lot, and uh, that use uh, humor, satire, and caricature in their works. And also this kind, this sense of surrealism that I, I approach between these artists: Dumier, uh, Max Ernst, Goya, of course, and. On others. So, this is a series uh, I developed from 2002 to 2008. Is Atec Panda. Atec Panda is a kind of TV that is more common in Cuban homes. So, uh, but because the government uh, sells it to the workers, and so everybody has the same television. Again, it has to do with the idea of, of information, and everybody receives the same information because we only have uh, two at that time. Now we have like four, but. We used to have four, two channels of television only that control all the news. So I made this series. Uh, uh, it's all what, what, whatever happened, any news, I comment through the prints. Mm -hmm. And this is chip break. It's a piece uh, uh, in which uh, it's made with light boxes also. And I work a lot with the idea of the chip break, the symbolism of the chip break like, as a, a symptom of society. Uh, and in this case, uh, um, like what the water brings after a chip break, after a huracan, like these dead things. Uh, I made uh, light boxes inside these things, that, uh, this container that Cuban people have in their homes always because they need to keep water, to save water, for, because we have water sometimes one day to know. And, and so in any house, you will find these uh, kind of containers. And as, as I said, that you will find this in many countries in South America and in Africa and in all underdevelopment countries. So the idea of poverty and wealthy is something that I have been working a lot in, in my work also. This is a piece based on Goya uh, print, the dream of the reason. They have a projection of the, of the 
of the piece in the in the in the in the wall, and these are all containers used in Cuban markets for self food. But of course, we have a slow, we have had a lot of a scarcity of food and and other things during many years. So I take pictures of the markets in Canada and the United States and made the light boxes and put it in this rust, very rustic uh, uh, container that we have in Cuba. So I have to do a lot with this idea of how in contemporary world we, ha we are divided by, because of the poverty and the wealth and, and the scarcity and the abundance. And it's like something that society still cannot solve. And, well, these are more related to, to to immigration, uh, there are so, so, uh, like treasure trunks in the bottom of the sea. It's a piece uh, I made a full uh, room with the sun and these treasure trunks that are symbolizing the life of of the people uh, that die crossing the the, the ocean. And I, uh, these pieces are here also because in these pieces and like in the other also I have I think in some way the influence of artists as Louis Bourgeois as King Halls. Uh, that made this kind of installation with found objects that I always do to this uterus. It was also within the same uh, idea of uh, the previous piece. And, and it's like the room for a baby in the bottom of the sea also. And was made with real objects that you will find in, a, in any room for the baby. So two paintings that, ha that deal more with the idea of the woman body and they are the reference also to another artist that I like a lot, that is Ana Mendieta, who was a Cuban artist, very uh, well known in the United States. Was a, she was a Peter Pan, and she always worked with the idea of the body in relation with the island, and this is a subject that I have bring in many of my work too. It's a novel of the war and universal core. Of course, I think uh, artists, women artists have like this feeling to being connected to, to air, to being connected to the universe. And this also, with the, this piece also had this reference, mutilations. It was, a, a, it was a very old factory for chocolate that have these bins, and they asked me to make a piece for the, for the exhibition there, and so I take all these old bins and make like part of, of my body. It's a kind of self-portrait. So my work has also been very influenced by universal literary philosophy, mythology, and science. Uh, and illustrations, like uh, child books. The Alice in Wonderland have been a presence in many of my work and, and well, other characters. Uh, this piece is a water cycles. Uh, it's based on, on Heraclitus idea that life is like a river that we never swim twice in the same water. So the, each piece is made with with mirror, you, you see that I use a lot of mirror in my work because I like the reflection. I like the idea that the, the people who see the piece become part of the piece also. So these are uh, night, night uh, convex pieces. There are always like a different self-portrait and, and it's changing. It's like the flow, the, the movement of water, of a river and, and the, the, the people who see the piece also make the piece change. So it have to do with this idea of, of, of the life and dynamics of the life. And the road of, of uncertainty uh, was a piece, is uh, part of the collection of the thyssen Bornemisa uh, Contemporary Art Museum. Uh, it's, it's also based in the uh, Heidegger uh, um, theory of the uncertainty. And it, deal with the, all the wonders that we have in contemporary society of where are we going uh, as, uh, as a race, as a human race, and, and all uh, the concerns we have uh, about the future. So it's the, the big uh, deeper shape, the shape of the, of the big deeper in the stars. When you see through, you see these uh, videos that are very uh, psychedelic. And they are all reference to, to history, to our on, on history, and, and, uh, and the, the idea of the star is because it's like in, like in this piece, like the eyes of God is idea that I, I bring to many of my pieces. 
It's like somebody is looking to us through, through the sky, through the far away. Could be God, could be an extraterrestre or whatever. <laughs> but it's this, this idea to, to be observed that is also in this uh, video installation in which I work with uh, um, old prints that I animate on the top of, of, of photograph. And <clears throat> relate also to, to in, some, in this case, Einstein, theory of relativity. These are two prints, ma machine to, ma uh, time machine and quadrimomentum. Quadrimomentum is a hom hom homage to he Escher, who is a printmaker that I love it. And so it is, quadrimomentum is, the, is uh, the theory of relativity, said so that the quadrimomentum is the point in, in which two different times uh, collapse together. And so it's, for me, it's like my Im Im imaginative encounter with Escher. And machine to dra to, uh, time machine have to do with the idea of Q1, the future, what will happen. I, will ha I would like to have a time machine to see it. This Chronos is also a, a book, uh, it's an artist book made with mirrors and prints, and of course it's related to, to time, the idea of time and how, how time has been represented through history, through art and mathematics. And, mm -hmm. This is also a recent piece that has to do with the idea of time. And here you see more reference to child literature, in this case the fall, it's a comment about Cuban society, but of course using the symbolism of Pinocchio and Rapunzel. Gulliver. Mm -hmm. This piece has to do also with the idea of emigration and how the, the, the slaves and the emigrant people build this, uh, the, uh, the blood that is behind the construction of the cities, the big cities. And this, uh, this uh, was part of the series in, uh, that are more related to music. I made four big paintings, with each, one, each one to a different city, and was the fourth season of Vivaldi in Miami, and it's a, a spring. And this is uh, a very old piece that also is very related to poetry. Uh, in this case, there were poets that commit suicide, and I made these pillows. Uh, embroidered with, with uh, quotation from their poems, and it has to do with the idea of loneliness and the symbolism and re uh, reference to, to dream and, and die in, in many of their poetry. And it's a, a, a quotation, the title from Anne Sexton is Alone at Night I Marry My Bed. And this installation also has to do with a very uh, well-known Cuban poet that I love, Gaston Baquero, who was an exiled poet. And uh, this is an uh, interactive piece that people intervene. It's uh, invisible poems, and people have, it's a kind of tunnel that in Cuba, we have in all the, the park, children's park, and, and it's like the place where the child hide from when they are in the in the park inside the tunnel. And so uh, what I do was in the small um, windows that have the tunnel, I, I reproduce this poem in glass, engraving in glass. And when people go inside, it's like you have this uh, psychological uh, travel to another time in your life, like. The, travel in time to your childhood. But also, they have these white pencils where you can write whatever you want in the, in the, in the walls of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So uh, also, mythology has been a, uh, a lot of, I uh, have a lot of reference to mythology in my work. In this case, this is Penelope. And of course, it has to do also, again, with emigration, with the idea of all the families that, that, is, uh, are, that live uh, split because of, of emigration, all the women that stay alone in their uh, country uh, land. And uh, it's about this idea of time also and being waiting for something. And 
these two pieces also reference to, to mythology. In this case, this is Narcissus. Uh, for, for, for Cubans, also, the idea, the idea of egocentrism is very important. I think, in some way, uh, we, we grow in this uh, education that try to show that it's very chauvinistic and try to show that we are different, we have a, a special place, we, the men are the more males in the world. <laughs> and so all these kind of, of, of things that, in some way, I think, they don't allow people to really develop when you have all. So this, in this case, Narciso is the shape of Cuba. And it's a self-portrait also, reflect, reflecting on the, on the water, on the sea. And between Exila and Caricdis, it's a reference to the two mythological monsters that, that all the sailors in, in, in Greek times were afraid with. It's, it's part of the Odysseus uh, 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 story. That, uh, and I made a, a, a reference to the Florida stretch in there because of all the Cubans that are, have died crossing the Florida stretch. Like, of course, uh, these are uh, the place where I born, as, as you know, as, is a very strong reference in my, in my work, the idea of emigration and the suffering of people to try to cross to America. And it's, it's very reference to Cuba, but it's also, as we, we saw recently, it's a problem that is in everywhere, in Mexico, with Syria, with all, all the countries in the world. So this is a piece from 1993, the dance circumstance of water all around, is the shape of Cuba. It was the first time that I used my body as, with the shape of Cuba, and it has to do with the idea of uh, isolation and the impossibility to trespassing the island, the body, and the limits. In 1994, when I was invited to the Havana Biennial for the, for the first time, uh, uh, I, still, I, 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 was, I have been working with the idea of uh, migration, and it was a very important issue at that time in Cuba. There was a big, big crisis of the, of the rafters, that crossed by, by thousands to America, and so some of the pieces reflect this. This is uh, there was an installation. I was ten suitcases painted inside, and did you notice that suitcases are very old because there was the, the kind of, of suitcase that people have in Cuba at that time. We have not stored where to buy the new suitcases. And this is a piece uh, also from the same time. But in this case, the, the suitcases are very big. They made like a, a room for a baby, a room for a couple, and a room for an old man. They were three big, very big suitcases. They have to do with the idea that when you try to carry all your memories or the, your, your country, what you, all your uh, the things that you learn in your life, the suitcase becomes so big that you cannot Live, you cannot carry with you. So it has, it's, it's a suitcase more dedicated to the people who stay in the, in the island. Because uh, for me, emigration, uh, I, I'm interested in seeing emigration from both sides, from the people that emigrate and from the people that stay. And so, I, I, for this subject, also, I work a lot with, with aquariums, with making these sculptures that were real water and fishes. and. It's again the reference. In this case, it's a self-portrait. It's also made with aquariums. It's a self-recognition of the fish, and it has to do with this symbolism of the water and the body, the idea of the, the woman utero that we born from water, and uh, water surround the island, and it's part of, of the cycles of life. So each, each, each aquarium is like part of the body. And this uh, also piece relate to nature and, and to water. It's why does rain look so much like a flood of tears? It was a glass uh, installation in 1999. And these are uh, from a serious sea of sorrows. They are reference uh, to their photograph and, and, and etchings. It's a kind of collage. And there are a lot of reference to Max Ernst also in these pieces, like in the surrealistic uh, approach to the subject. 
This is a small mirage. It was an installation uh, that deal with the expectations. It's, it's another of the things that I, the, the teams that I work with. The expectation that, that uh, immigrants have when they arrive to a new country, what they want uh, to, to achieve, no? And sometimes it's like, well, money, marriage, a house, or food, or just always a better life, no? So it was like this, uh, uh, it's a, it was uh, light boxes with the windows uh, of the airplane and a, a video that showed like this, all these material things on the clouds disappearing. It's like a mirage. Mm -hmm. The idea of the ruin of utopia is something and the, uh, that I have been working in a lot in my work. Uh, uh, because I think in, uh, as in, in 19, end of 19th century and beginning of the 20th century, the idea of uh, the possibility of build a society, uh, socialist or communist, that was supposedly would be fair for everybody, uh, was something that people uh, believed. But this was in crisis. Uh, of course, one was uh, demonstrated that it doesn't work in countries as United, uh, United, uh, Russia and and all the East as communist countries. And so for me, this idea of the ruins of utopia is like the ruin of the thinking in, in some way in a society that, that could achieve, achieve equality, equality for everybody. So I think uh, I adapt this to Cuba and use in many of, of my work. And some of these ideas are also in the videos that you ha have, uh, like the crisis in Cuba, uh, the special period, the island that is like a kite that can fly and uh, is going out of reach. And also, uh, I was very inter very interested at that time in in, in aspects that relate to poverty in Cuban society. In this case, this is machine to drown sorrow. These kind of containers, uh, you will see in many uh, uh, parties and public uh, events in Cuba, because they sell rum and beer from these containers to the people. So for me, I made a, and in Cuba, there are a lot of alcoholism. So I, I improve, improve uh, population more. Uh, because I think it's a way of evasion also for the people. So I made a, a parallel between the sea and the alcohol as a way of evasion. The sea that allows people the physical evasion and the alcohol that uh, brings the, like the, the psychological or spiritual evasion. So people in the gallery could drink beer, rum from the, but when you see inside the container, you see the sea. It's like you are drinking the sea. And something similar with this uh, installation it's, uh, from the same period is uh, uh, I made a video about the people that uh, was looking for food and things on the garbage just in one day. So it's just in one day how many people in walking from my house to all Havana I can I can see do, doing this. And so the the video was inside a garbage tan and you, the, the public needs to go inside and do the same that they do to see their peace. And I made this in different version of this in Mexico and in, in London also, because I think, well, it's a problem that you can find anywhere with the homeless and with people that are uh, out of society. This also is a, the same reference, and in this case to religion, and it's a, a, a procession that happened every 17th of December in a town near Havana. Uh, it's very medieval, people go cr crawling and in their bags, it's very primitive. And so I, have, I was there for three years making pictures and videos, and uh, in, the, in the day of the, of the procession, I made the, the, I display in the eight, eight hospital wall, 17 light boxes that were with pictures that I take previously. Uh, because this night, in, for this row that is very dark, passed like 500,000 people. 
that never go to a gallery. It's just people that, that are going there because they believe in this religion. And it's something that is very interesting to find in a, a, in, in a society as Cuba, that's supposed to be a communist country, and, a, and, and also supposed to have uh, all the health issues solved, because uh, 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 the health assistance is free. But people cannot find this solved until they need to, to do this and, and to still believe in all these uh, uh, religions and pay these promises to, to feel that they will be held. And after that, I showed these light boxes in Casa de las Américas in a gallery, and I tried to bring the idea of the procession to, a, to the gallery. So it's very, it's very sad, and it's, it was a, a, a body of work in which I was working with all these uh, uh, not well-known things that happen in Cuba society. That, this also from Saint Sirius, and this is electro daily graph. I try to be a, a, a cardiograph of the society. So I made like uh, seven different videos with the issues that are the most concerned for people, like uh, money, like the health, uh, um, housing, all people, what they are going to do because they, they don't have a good uh, uh, salary after they retire and uh, isolation also were all this. Uh, and it was a kind of, of performance because when you lie on the bed, then the, the, the video star and show one of the, of the pieces. And always is the sound of the heart, the sick heart. And this is uh, in the last bi biennial in 2015. I made this piece in the street that is the map of each of the countries that Cuba has depend on during the history. So it's a soup. Uh, I give uh, like this food to people. It was a kind of performance. But with the, this uh, pots that have this shape of the map, the different map. And it's a, the Caldosa de la Historia. It's a Cuban expression. I don't know how to translate. Because uh, every uh, 28th of, this, of September, there is a big party in Cuban street, and they always give this soup. So it's part of the a kind of political tradition also. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with the idea of dependency. That is the idea that I work. And here again is in the wine country and cutting the cake. It is very related to what is happening now in Cuba. With we don't know with the. With what will happen in the future with the new investments, with mm -hmm. and conversation with Proteus also is a part of the series of the, uh, uh, mythologic reference. Uh, Proteus was the god who predicted the future, and always as a Cuban, everybody asked me always, "What will happen in Cuba?" This for many years. What will happen? <laughs> I say I don't know and cannot predict the future. So I made this print that referred to to that. Mm -hmm. So you see in there the video Carrera de Relevo. It has to do. It's, uh, it came from Cristóbal Christoph, Colón to Uncle Sam, the Fool, and Liborio, and it's about what will happen again in Cuba because I don't feel that like the young generation will take the charge of the society. We still are like in the same cycle. And uh, other things that have been very influenced in my work have been trips and traveling and displacement. That is the subject of this exhibition. Uh, it's a sub I have been working a lot with that. In this case, this is a piece that is the move. And it has pictures in one side from uh, in different cities and all over the world, like in the installation. And in, in the other side, picture of Cuba. But even when Cuba has been isolated during many years, all the places in the world have so many things in common. We all, as human beings, have at the end are the same. And the, I think with the cities and with how people behave, happen the same. So it's, a, it's about that. When the two pictures come together, you always see something that is very similar in both in both places, even when they are so far, so far, so apart, politically or, or socially. 
And recently I have been working a lot with, with my, when I travel, I take pictures, and then I rethink about these places and the impression that they cause on, made on me. And so in this case, this is Manhattan, and it's learning to speak in Manhattan and a vision of the devil in Broadway. Mm -hmm. but they are all based in real pictures. And this is Alice in Vegas Land series. And the idea of near and far, it's a deal that I have been dealing a lot. A lot. This is the, the boy that marked the 90 miles from America to Cuba, that is in Key West. And uh, then the southernmost point in America. And so I made a reproduction in Havana for my, ex for my exhibition at the, at the National Museum of Fine Art. This, these are the, this is the real picture of the boy in Key West. This I made in Havana. And I, the, in one side I have the same letters, that's the most point, and the other side I have the north most point in Cuba, 90 miles to America. <laughs> and so it's coming a video from each of the part, and it's the sea seen from Key West and the sea seen from Cuba. That is the same sea, we are just 90 miles away. So it's, so it's about this idea of being so close and, and yet so far. And this is also an installation that has to do with the same idea. In, it was in the same show, it's 90 miles. And well, it's pictures that I take from the airplane when I, in my trip from Havana to Miami. So you start in Havana and you finish in Miami. And it's like so easy to cross and at the same time. It's so sad to see that so many people have died doing this. And this was a picture in Havana. This, show, this piece I show in many different places in Miami. In Havana, this was in Key West. This is a Cuban comparsa in Key West. <laughs> and I made a, a similar piece for the Venice Biennial, uh, but in this case, related to the people who crossed from, from uh, in the, Adri the Adriatic Sea, from the Balkans to Italy. Mm -hmm. And all, all these kind of, of idea of the documents also that are, for me, uh, a very silly idea. We were commenting yesterday uh, how white people need a passport. What, mean, what means? Uh, why some people uh, are so lucky? They have a good passport, or other people don't. We are all human beings. It's the same, no? And for Cuban, for a Cuban to have a passport was like a dream for many years. It's, uh, people don't imagine then uh, traveling is something very difficult and seen for for many people in the world. And so it's about this document that don't say nothing about what, who you, are, you really are as a human being, but it's so important for you, for your future, and for your, the opportunities you will have in life. So it's, uh, I made a whole series with passport and all the kind of documents. Mm -hmm. this is a, with the American passport, with Cuban passport. Mm -hmm. And with all other kind of docu document and identities that in some way try to define who you are. And uh, the relation between Havana and Miami has been a subject that I work a lot in my work, in my pieces also, uh, because Miami has been, and Florida has been a very important place for Cubans to establish. And uh, I, as I am living now in, in Miami also, this uh, in some way affect my, my production, I think. And this piece that you have here, have deal with the same idea of the bridge also, is the idea of the success or the failure of the trip, of the emigration of any trip, even the, the symbolism of the trip, of the, of the life of the trip also. In, in one case, you can cross the bridge and know the world and, and travel all over or be, being successful. And in the other case, in the other side, you can die in this, uh, 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 trying to reach this dream, no? And also, again, the, the idea of the mirror in which people reflected is, is to make you think that it could be you, it could be somebody that you know, so we are all linking in, in this world. This is a urban zoo, it's also refer, a reference to, to Miami and Havana, it's like a somorphization of both cities. 
and searching Ithaca is also based on, myth on Greek mythology on, on the idea of Odysseus that was lost 20 years uh, far from the, his island. But it's in one side is Havana and one in the other is Miami. It's, uh, again, this uh, dream of reach the ideal place, or like the homeland or the utopia also. It's another more recent reference to Miami. And Entropias is a, a, the la, one of the last uh, subjects that I am working, even when in the, in the installation, that I show you that was the, the, the road to uncertainty in some way refer, has reference to the idea of entropy also. And with the idea of all the information that we have in contemporary life that we cannot uh, process. Uh, 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 all, uh, so this is a subject that I, I now am very concerned about and also uh, the idea of the big cities, the light, the, all the, this reference to politics also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in this case, a reference to, to Don Quixote. Mm -hmm. And the lottery that has been uh, one of the, the last uh, elements that I have incorporated to my work is the, this, the lot lottery tickets. I'm working a lot with this, and again with the idea of what people, is, the expectation, the expectation that, that uh, many uh, immigrants and, and people who live here have to win the lottery, to have a better life. Or... And, in, and recently, the last, this year, in 2016, I worked with the idea of lottery and politics also. Uh, and in a, in a series that I call like the Powerball. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, like the last. Uh, that would be all this contradiction between people and politics and. And thank you so much. <laughs> 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 If you have any questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming this evening. Thank you. Um, when I'm looking at your, your art, when you're in Cuba, are you exhibiting it, are you exhibiting it in a government uh, gallery? Yeah. Is that what it is? <laughs> well, I, I, I exhibit in many venues in Cuba and abroad. In Cuba, I exhibit in, in mostly in museums and institutions. Not in, in in commercial galleries. Okay, mm -hmm. and certainly it's open to to the general public. Mm -hmm. All of these yeah. spaces. Mm -hmm. and do, do, I'm just curious in regard to the enthusiasm for mm -hmm. for going to galleries and seeing art. Mm -hmm. um, do you see people of all social economic groups participating in the arts and being supportive of the arts? Yeah, pe people is very interesting in art in Cuba because art is part of uh, the way, the only way that people have to make catharsis, to enjoy life, is through art. Imagine, uh, in Cuba they are not collectors. Nobody has money to buy art. So all the work and the art that, that artists do is in function of communication mainly to, to people. When there, when there is a Havana Viena or something like that, Many people, all, uh, everybody wants to go and see what is happening. And, and the collectors mainly came from America, from other countries, because, but Cuba enjoy uh, art, they, they like. And of course it has been, Cuban, since, since the end of 80s, Cuban artists are very concerned to society. And there have been a lot of artists working with uh, subjects that in some way are uh, criti criticizing the establishment and the government. And it has been a lot of censorship also. But artists like learn to deal with symbolism and other kind of things that allow you to show in, this, in these places. And also in, in, in a way that you become more recognized internationally that's allow you also as an artist 
to get access to these places and like be more protected. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The biennial uh, mm -hmm. pictures there, you can see the numbers, yeah. the amazing mm -hmm. number of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exciting. Mm -hmm. Where do you get your courage to talk about, as a woman, <coughs> as, a, as a Cuban woman, a woman of color in the world, even about loneliness, mm -hmm. um, not just about the politics of it, which I don't know if you have repercussions of that, but how did you build that for yourself, especially as a young artist flourishing? Well, because I think that's what art is for, no? Mm -hmm. It's to, it's a way of learning about the world, about yourself, and express what you learn, or what you want to communicate. And for me, has, and I think for many artists, it uh, has been like a support, very important support to my life. Uh, all, I always, uh, I think in some way, I make catharsis through the art, no? I, I, I deal all my, with all my demons through art. And that's very good. I think, oh my God, I'm so lucky, <laughs> lucky to, to have that, no? I think that's the most important thing that art can bring us as creators and for the public also to find, because I think sometimes many, many people don't recognize or the, the, you, you need to communicate with art also and you always will find something there that connects so much with you. It could be a music, be a, a read something, seen a painting, uh, and in some way make you better or, or make you stronger. That's important, so important, I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Muchas gracias por todo. Ay, <laughs> <laughs> gracias. Okay.